Okay guys, so in this video we're going to be checking out an A-level chem past paper question from paper 1 2021 under the AQA spec and it's going to be an amount of substance question involving ideal gas equations. Now it's a six mark question and the reason I chose it is because there are some caveats we really need to be aware of in reference to excess and limiting reagents, all right? So I'll link the past paper and mark scheme in the description. Feel free to check it out yourself. Pause the video, attempt the question. Practice makes perfect in chemistry. And I can't show the actual paper on the screen because of AQA's copyright. If you wanna see more videos like this, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. But with that out of the way, let's jump straight into the question and see what's going on. So iron reacts with dilute HCl to form iron two chloride and hydrogen shown in the equation below. We're given a nice equation here, saves us doing it ourselves. And we're given some variables here. So 0.998 grams of pure iron is added to 30 centimeters cubed of one mole per decimeter cubed HCl. One of these reagents is in excess and the other reagent limits the amount of hydrogen produced in the reaction. Calculate the maximum volume. Now this is just a confusing way to say calculate the volume, right? In meters cubed, so that's our unit of hydrogen gas produced at 30 degrees C, 100 kilopascals. Give your answer to three sig figs. In your answer, you should identify the limiting reagent in the reaction, all right? So this is really important to understand the differences between excess and limiting reagents and how we calculate it. So as I said, pause the video. If you haven't already, try it out yourself and see where you go wrong, learn from your mistakes. So we've all calculation questions. Step one, start with the moles, okay? Just do an absolute brain dump on the page and get your equations down. So mole equation number one, N equals CV. Mole equation number two, N equals M over MR. We may use these in some capacity, not too sure. I'm just gonna chuck them on the page. Next one is because it's given us all of our ideal gas variables here and we know that the hydrogen is a gas, we're gonna chuck our ideal gas equation on the page, PV equals NRT, right? That's our equations done. Now we're gonna pick one of these more equations and that's where we're gonna start. So up here, we're given the volume and concentration of HCl hydrochloric acid. So that's exactly where I'm gonna start. Moles of HCl equals, concentration is one, multiplied by our volume, which is 30 centimeters cubed here. So we have to times that by 10 to the minus three, exactly the same thing as dividing by a thousand in order to convert it to decimeters cubed. The reason for that is because this concentration is in amount per decimeter cubed volume. So that's the reason we have to do that. Don't really need your calculator here. You're just gonna times this by one. So the answer is gonna be 30 times 10 to the minus three. Okay, or in other words, if you don't like standard form, you can do it as 0 0.03, okay? Either way is completely fine. Next up then is the moles of iron. So if you notice here, we use this equation to begin with. Now we don't have a volume and we don't have a concentration of iron. So we're gonna have to use this equation right here. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Moles of the pure iron equals, so we're gonna do our mass here, which is given in the question, 0 0.998, divided by our molar mass, you can find this in your periodic table or if you've done enough questions like me, <laughs> you know it's 55.8, okay? Put that in your calculator, and you're gonna get an answer of 0 0.017885, okay? And then dot, 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 um, and this is moles. So we've worked out the moles, what is step two, okay? They say here, one of these reagents is in excess and the other is limiting, right? So how do we work out what the excess and limiting reagents are, okay? So let's write out some notes here. You obviously don't have to write this out in your exam. I'm just writing out to explain it to you guys. So the limiting reagent is used up first in the reaction, okay? So how do we know which reagent or reactant is used up first? It's going to be the one with the lower moles. 
Okay, now don't get tricked out here and think, okay, I'm just going to look at my moles of iron and my moles of HCl. This one's lower, therefore it's clearly the limiting reagent. Uh -uh. Okay, that is a big fat red cross. You don't want to take that approach. You want to follow this approach. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at our equation that AQA kindly gave us right up here and think to myself, what are the molar ratios between these two reactants? And it's simply the mole coefficient, right? So here we have an iron with nothing in front of it. So that's a one mole. And then here, HCl has got a nice two. So we know that the ratio that they react in, the true ratio is one to two, okay? So the easiest way for us to calculate what moles are actually lower is to look at our mole coefficient and our theoretical moles that we just calculated. And what you want to do is you want to divide the theoretical moles by their respective mole coefficient. So for iron, it's going to be 0.017885 divided by its mole coefficient, which is one, and it's just going to be left as 0.017885, right? And if we look at HCl, it's going to be 0.03 divided by two, okay? And this is going to give us a value of 0.015. So looking at these two values, if we rub this out, so we know that iron is 0.017885, and we know that HCl is 0.015 according to their theoretical mole to mole coefficient ratios. Which one is lower? This one right here. Okay. There are multiple methods to calculate the limiting and excess reagents or reactants. I find this method the easiest one. So this is the one I like to teach. So this right here is our limiting reagent. Okay. So the HCl is going to be used up first in the reaction and it's going to limit the amount of products. Okay, so keep that in mind. So why is this important then? It's really, really important because we're if we're working out the moles of hydrogen gas that are produced, we have to use the limiting reagent to calculate that product, right? Because you're going to get moles of reactants used up and you're going to get the moles of products, okay? So in this case, then we would use our moles of HCl as the limiting reagent and we would not be able to use our moles of iron because this is an excess. It will give us the incorrect answer for our product moles. Hopefully that makes sense. So just remember that if you're revising, if you're practicing these questions, when you're working out the moles of the products, you always want to use the limiting reagents, okay? And what, what do I mean by use the limiting reagents? I mean, use it to work out the next mole ratio. So for example, we've done the reactant mole ratios, but you also want to take note of the products. So here we have a one to two, and then that carries on to a one to one, okay? So what we can do here is if we're using our moles of HCl as our limiting reagent or limiting reactant, this is going to have a two to one ratio with hydrogen. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So I'm gonna rub this out quickly and we're gonna write down what are our moles of hydrogen because we're going to need that for the next stage of the question. All right, because they're asking us to calculate the volume of hydrogen gas. So we're gonna to have to rearrange this expression to make volume the subject. And this is going to involve having the moles being calculated for hydrogen. Let's do that right now then. So we're gonna have moles of hydrogen gas equals the limiting reagent 0 0.03 divided by two because it's in a two to one ratio. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So that would be 0 0.015 mole, okay? Now all we have to do is plug that into our PV equals NRT expression to calculate the volume. So if we wanna rearrange this then, it's going to become V equals, and all we have to do is divide both sides by P, so take it to the other side. So it's going to be V equals NRT divided by P. Okay, not too complicated here. Hopefully you guys are fine with that. So next thing you really, really have to pay attention to within the ideal gas calculations is standard units. Okay, what are the units involved in each of these variables? So pressure, first and foremost, we're going to have Pascals, whereas we're given kilopascals, so we're going to have to convert that in some way. Volume is asking us for meters cubed. Thankfully, volume, the unit is also meters cubed, so we don't have to convert anything there. Moles, easy peasy, that's moles. R is given to us, so we don't have to convert anything. 
T, capital T, is going to be Kelvin. All right, we want it in Kelvin, and they've given it to us in degrees Celsius. So I'm going to make a note of that here. T equals 30. And then all we have to do to convert degrees Celsius into Kelvin, do you remember what we have to do? Plus 273. All right, so that's going to equal 303 Kelvin. So we've got all our values. All we have to do here is plug it into the equation. Not too shabby. So volume of H2 gas equals our moles that we just calculated, 0.015, multiplied by our R, our gas constant, 8.31, multiplied by our temperature, 303, all divided by our pressure, which I said we have to put it as pascals. So you're just going to times it by a thousand there. So a hundred thousand pascals. If you put that in your calculator, then we're going to get an answer of 3.776895 times 10 to the minus four. Okay. And this is going to be meters cubed. So is that our final answer? No, it's not. Remember they said to give it to three significant figures and that's exactly what we're going to do here. It's going to become 3.78 if you round it to three sig figs still times 10 to the minus four and that is our final answer right there so where do our marks come from here going through the mark scheme real quick this is going to be one mark this is going to be a second mark something that i didn't explicitly write on the page here is what our limiting reagent was so even though i explained it to you and said that this is the limiting you would need to formally write it out so you would say limiting reagent is the HCl. All right, so that would be your third mark. Next up would be the moles of the hydrogen gas. That would be our fourth mark. Fifth mark would be the correct units. So collectively, the, the temperature unit being Kelvin and the pressure unit being 100,000. So if you got both of those variables correct in the correct units, you would have got your fifth mark. And then the final answer to three significant figures would have been your sixth mark, six out of six. So hopefully you found that breakdown helpful. Just keep practicing these calculation questions, okay? As I said, practice makes perfect. If you wanna see more content like this, like the video, subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Comment any questions down below. Best of luck in your exams and revision, guys. Until next time, peace.